Yo, what's up? It's Patrick from Guy in the Cube. And recently I was talking to Gaston Cruz, him and his team. They had a really good question. They were like, Patrick, we're creating this lake house. We're adding new columns to some of the tables, some of the managed tables in the lake house, but they're not showing up in our semantic model. How do we get that to work? And let me be honest, when they first asked me about this, I was like, I know we had this question before, but I forgot how I figured it out. So I had to go do some tinkering. After tinkering, figured out how to do it. And so in this video, I'm gonna show you. So you know how we like to do? Instead of all this talking, let's do what? Let's head over to my laptop. So I have a lake house here that I've created called Add More Columns. And I have a notebook that I created. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna get rid of this and we're just gonna use some Spark SQL. So we're gonna create a really simple table and we're just gonna call it Add More Columns dot sales, something like that, right? This is just for demo purposes. And so I'm gonna add a sale amount Make it an int, I'm gonna add freight, make it an int, product, ID, whatever you want it to be, right? So we're creating this table. So we're gonna click run here. My session's gotta start up and then you'll see it create the table. So now my table is created. So if I go here under the table section and click refresh, you'll see there's my table with those three columns. Now, by default, when you create a lake house in a workspace that's backed by a fabric capacity, in addition to the lake house, you also get a SQL endpoint and you get a default data set. Anything I do to my lake house, the SQL endpoint will pick up and so will the default data set. So let's say I create another cell here and I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna say percent percent SQL again. And I'm gonna say alter table this add column. Let's add a column tax. And we're gonna make it an integer. And we're gonna run this. So boom. And if we go back over to our workspace, you'll see in my default data set, you'll see there's tax. Okay, if I go back to my lake house and switch to the SQL endpoint, you'll also see in the table, there's tax. All right, I'm gonna head back over to my lake house. So the challenge they were facing is they were like, hey Patrick, we're in the lake house and we build a custom semantic model. So by default, you get this default semantic model, but now they built a custom semantic model. So we'll go here, we'll create our custom semantic model. I'm gonna add this single table to it and um, I give it a name. So we're gonna call this our custom model and we'll click confirm and it'll take a few seconds and then we'll open up into the model view. There's my model view. There's my four columns, which is exactly the four columns I already have in that table in the lake house and also in the semantic layer. And I can also see them in the endpoint. If I go back to my notebook and we're gonna change this and we're just gonna add a column called freight and we're gonna run this. Oh, freight already exists, my bad. We're gonna call this shipping. Okay, so we'll go back to our workspace and the first thing we wanna do is check out that default semantic model. So we're gonna click right here and what you'll see is shipping is automatically added. If we go back to the lake house and we're already in the SQL endpoint, you'll see that shipping is already added. Let's switch back over to the lake house. So if we switch to the lake house, you'll also see that shipping is already added. But if we go to the new data set that we created, choose custom model, choose open my data model, what you'll see is that shipping doesn't exist. This was the question. How do I get shipping into this custom semantic model? And I was like, eh, but let me show you how. What you need to do if you click edit tables, and there's a little icon right here. If you just click refresh, see it's fetching the schema and then choose confirm. And then what you'll see right here in just a second is now they're shipping, okay? So let me do it one more time. Click edit tables, you'll see the little icon, click it, whatever columns you add, whatever changes you made, it'll automatically be added to that new custom semantic model. And you may be thinking, well, Patrick, why doesn't it automatically do it? Well, you have to think about development, the development process of a data engineer. You don't want it to automatically add columns and remove columns because maybe you're not ready. Maybe it's not in a consistent state where the data has been added to it and you don't want to add it to the semantic model until you've completed all the tasks that goes along with adding or removing or altering that table. So now you have a control way to do it. All right, what do you think? Have you ran into this before? Do you have any questions, comments? You know what to do. Post it in the comments below. If you want to know more about Fabric, it's probably a video flying over my head. And as always, from Adam and myself, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.